Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I be Yahweh do thank you for all things. We humbly ask and request in the magnificent name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Speak to us your words of truth. Pray these saying, sink deep down in our hearts, our spirits, our souls, and our mind. The performance will come about. You'll be glorified. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Everybody all right? Well, we greet um, all of you that are here and then those that are out there are just tuning in. Hallelujah. We're not going to spend a lot of time at the preliminaries. We're just going to go ahead and go on right off into the word. Glory to the king. All right. I'm sure that y'all been receiving some edifying teachings, right? Which, if you apply them, if, notice, if you apply them, that's when you will start seeing the change in your spirit. That's when the performance will start to come about. Does that make any sense? Uh, the real question of the hour is, is does Yah allow evil in the world? Uh, most people uh, spend their life bitter at Yah based on some situation or circumstances that may take place. Um, and, and they just don't know him. We have not grew up in a culture or society that has really truly expressed Elohim to us. Uh, what they've done is they've expressed another figure playing Almighty. And we've confused this figure with the real true uh, creator of the universe. Uh, because in the uh, Old Covenant, it talks to him, it talks about him as creator, redeemer, savior, um, shepherd. Uh, but then in the Renewed Covenant, it speaks to him uh, names like um, salvation, he provides for us, um, and, and it just goes on and on and on. You hear me over and over and over again talk about nature. Pay attention to nature. And I'm not talking about nature when you look outside and when you drive down the road and notice that the leaves are changing colors because of the seasons. I'm talking about nature. When I talk about nature, I'm talking about um, how you function as an individual on a daily basis, you must pay attention to nature, all right? Um, when people get some type of horrific disease or cancer or something like that and a loved one passes away or, or they see this great pain and suffering upon people, they say, why did God, here's the hallmark word right here, allow, allow. And if I probably dealt with that word one time, I guarantee I've dealt with it at least 200 times in the last four years because, you know, we are coming into greater knowledge and greater truth and, and of course people want to defend their position and their perspective by using the word allow, allow. In other words, they're attributing something to Yah which is totally different than his character or his nature. Does that make any sense? Well, of course, we have not a shortage in this world philosophers and theologians and everybody, including um, the weatherman, he does it all the time. You know, you have, you know, hurricanes and everything. They call it an act of God. Okay, now who is this God, though? Because I tell you, the um, mighty one that you would assume that people are trying to represent and speak to us about, he's been ill represented. Does that make any sense? <clears throat> So we know in this last generation, let's say within at least 100 years, um, you know, a lot of people would say, well, oh, why did Hitler uh, kill so many people? Well, there's two sides to every story, isn't it? Um, and, and you might not like either side, but if you're ignorant of history, uh, then you're just automatically going to assume that all these people that Hitler killed were the people of the Bible. But when, on a careful examination, you find out that these Jews are not the people of the book. I mean, do I support Hitler and his atrocities that he, no, I don't. I don't support the murder or death of anyone, especially if it's not in war. Does that make any sense? I don't support the murder and death of what the United States of America is doing all across this globe. Now, they're killing innocent civilians. And, and you know, I know that the word is true. 
Whatsoever a man soweth, there shall he also reap. That's going to take place. Um, so we, you need to prepare your hearts and your minds <clears throat> all that you can because our country is not going to go around sowing all this death, hell, and destruction in other countries and it's not coming to our backyard. So be it in this generation of you or your children's generation, you better prepare your hearts and your minds so when that day does come, because it is coming, um, that hopefully we'll be able to escape these woes by keeping ourselves under the umbrella and the protection of the Almighty with the angel of the Most High. Because uh, I've never seen a righteous forsaken. Hallelujah. Um, but I don't know. Did y'all have something to do with Herod uh, killing all those babies when the Messiah was born? Well, John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But then here is Yah speaking of himself again, but I come to give you life and that more abundantly. We've grown up in a world conditioned, socially engineered um, by the education system, uh, news media, word of mouth, environment, and every single one of them have all had their minds shaped the same way. And of course, you know I make no apologies about uh, making some type of inroads or intrusion upon our minds uh, to try to help us all that I can by the help of the Ruah to get us out from under this abstract thought that we all seem to embrace as reality. Uh, it's a gauntlet. It really truly is tough. It, it, it's, it's tough, you know, you, unless you apply this word, unless it becomes living, you'll never, ever, ever uh, be able to see the advantages of what it means to have peace and attain peace because either way, one way or the other, uh, the enemy, either he is going to use you to take your peace or he's going to use others to steal your peace. But you can't give away your peace unless you voluntarily hand it over either way, be it the enemy or someone. Hallelujah. So does y'all allow evil? Well, let's take a look at how we talk and believe in this culture. And let's look at a few things about Yahweh. Let's remember Job. Yahweh's not the one who's bringing or actually doing the evil to us because his nature is good. He's good all the time. Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to Yah must believe that he is and that he is a what? Now, does that sound like someone who has an evil disposition of character? He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we don't have this kind of diligence in a society. This society doesn't breed. This kind of attitude because the flesh, you know, everything in this culture souls to the flesh. And it makes us lethargic, both naturally and spiritually. All right. James 117 says, every good, noticed, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father lights, uh oh, in whom, look at this, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So here we are again. We have it defined. So good comes from Yah. And of course, since we know for sure that there's two kingdoms working on this earth, then that means evil only comes to one source. And we're going to define the age old adage of why did Yah create evil then, okay? So sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. And I need all that you can to try to listen because we have defense mechanisms built up in our spirit. Uh, we have things that, that jack us when certain things are said. And it's getting even increasingly difficult today to even preach without people taking it personally rather than letting the word go and do its surgery like it should. First thing we want to do is if, if you heard me say one word to you, then the devil will say, see, look, you, he, remember that word he said to you the other day, and now he's using the pulpit as a means to beat you with it. Well, what are you going to say about the other 1,500 people that says that and, and the 20 people that text me and email me? You understand what I mean? Come on, saints. All right. 
How we have learned how to accuse y'all from a negative speech, and we have learned from this culture. So look at this. Learn how to talk. We need to learn how to talk. The problem is, is when you come from Christianity or any other religion, or even in society itself, and you assume that you know how to communicate because of what you've been immersed in. But according to the book, our mind has to be transformed. We even have to change our speech in order for us to be able to speak life and not death. Our speech prove we are angry and bitter at the Father at times. Literally proves that. The word allow, does it mean if we choose to allow something to happen does that also mean to some degree we approve or condone that action? Of course it does not. Or of course it does. Think about this. If we turn around and we use the word allow, something to happen, all right, does that also mean to some degree we approve or condone that action if you allow? Well, of course it does. I'll show you why. If we choose to allow our children to do something, aren't we then responsible? If we don't correct them, if we don't give them instruction and lead them the right way, are we not condoning their actions then? To some degree, for the consequences of that action. So let's think here for a moment. We're going to need to use our minds and have to turn our minds on, okay? All right, that means uh, any challenges that are coming up, you need to probably try to do whatever you can. Pay attention. Pay attention. Remember, we're Israelites, and we think from a concrete mindset and not a Christian abstract mind, all right? Meaning we're tangible people. See, hear, smell, taste, touch. If y'all really allows evil to happen, all right, does that imply that to some degree he is evil? Because remember, I just got finished using a natural analogy earlier. Do we, but if you, you really truly pay attention and you really truly watch us, we usually apply, apply the same things we use naturally, we attribute it to Yah. That's why I'm asking these questions to get us to think. So, because if we condone it and we never correct our children, then we're, con then we're actually accepting some form of responsibility for it ourselves. We actually approve of it. We sanction it. If Yah really allows evil to happen, does that imply that to some degree he is evil? That's the question. Or he approves or condones it? No, it's the very direct opposite. If we follow this line of thinking, which I do not advise, but if you watch our lives on closer examination, we actually do. If things go wrong in our life, first thing we ask is why? Yeah. We start to question the one that shouldn't even be in question. Wouldn't it make him responsible for that evil action? Yes, it would. To be responsible for evil requires the commission of the sin. Well, what does that mean? Now, that's a real question then. Does y'all ever sin? Of course, the answer is no. So we have to stop being schizophrenic, double-minded. It either is or it isn't. The answer is no. Yah is not like man. He doesn't sin, nor does he lie. But again, when things take place in our lives, you watch how we blame him. For certain things that go certain ways through ignorance. All right, then what's the problem? Let's find out what the problem is. The problem is our Gentile training system we have learned in America. We have learned how to think like our captors and not like our ancient fathers. Do y'all get that? Do y'all understand that? You think like your environment. You think like the way that this country has programmed you to think. They have a curriculum that they teach from one end of this land to the next. 
Something is wrong with our human reason, especially when we allege Yah allows, quote unquote, evil to happen. Isaiah 45, 7 says that I form the light and I create, look at this darkness, I make peace. And here's the word right here, create what? Evil. I, Yah, will do all these things. Well, that sends our mind reeling a little bit then, doesn't it? Hmm? Sowing and reaping again. Job 4, 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, lawlessness, wickedness, and sow wickedness, what do they do? Reap the same. It's an attitude. All right? The word create, Hebrew 12, 54, means to shape, to create, shape, form, or fashion, create. The word evil means, now watch this, watch this. The word evil means bad, evil, disagreeable, malignant, unpleasant. Evil, giving pain, unhappiness, misery, displeasing, sad, unhappy, hurtful. We never call these feelings and emotions evil. We say that's just the way we feel. That's why you have to pay attention to the kingdom. What kingdom is it representing? It's not God's kingdom is in righteousness and peace in the Holy Spirit. Are you following me? So, because you feel certain ways or you are experiencing certain emotions. If you learn how to define evil, then you'll know who the devil is. And you'll know when he's at your front door, you know when he's operating in your life. This evil can come either way. It can either come because of something you're experiencing, because there's a law of sowing and reaping that you may not be equating to or charging to something you've done. You could be ignorantly deceiving yourself and giving yourself a pass. Or you could be feeling this oppression coming from the outside. It could be coming from um, something pressing on you. For instance, uh, the cares of his life. The lust of other things. Could be a person. Are you following me? But whenever you feel bad, evil, disagreeable, malignant, or unpleasant, hmm? if it's something that's causing pain or misery, displeasing or sad or unhappy, then you're dealing with evil. You also, evil means, look at this, unkind, vicious, and disposition. We experience this a lot just in social media. There's a lot of evil on there. Is it not? People are evil on buying them keyboards. All right, watch this. Wicked, ethically, in general, of persons or thoughts or deeds. Because remember, we're, we're charged to cast down imaginations. This is what 2 Corinthians 10, 6 teaches us, right? We're charged to cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. Is that right? So, see, but we don't never really call these things evil, so we, we re our mind is not really educated scripturally to deal with it then. What we kind of do is wait for time and happenstance to pass. Sometimes we try to pray the evil away. Are y'all listening? But see, if we can hone these things in and we can really truly center it, then we would know what kingdom is operating at any given time. And we could be a whole lot more discerning of the Messiah's body, meaning you, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Actions, distress, misery, injury, calamity, adversity, wrong, evil, even ethnically. You know, there are some people that are just evil. They act out all these things. All right, did you notice something? Evil is never translated sin. 
That could be the reason why we don't ever do nothing about evil. Because if you don't feel like you're sinning, then where's the transgression at then? Hmm. But see, this is how wicked the enemy is on us, see? Words used in scriptures as evil, calamity, adversity, grievous, sorrow, trouble, distress, misery, affliction, hurt, etc. Are you following me? These words, going back to Job, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So in other words, there's something that you have not fingered in your life that is causing you to constantly revisit these negative feelings and these negative emotions. Most of the time, we like pointing forward the finger and blame shifting. That way it alleviates us from judgment of ourselves. Still, you can do that all day long. It still doesn't change the environment, nor does it change your nature. Because you have to understand your mind is conditioned to not meet y'all's conditions. The devil's a formable foe. He can do anything to keep you from peace and even anything to keep you from making peace that he will do. Because he's not about to lose ground because it took him a long time to inhabit this house. Does that make sense? I mean, the word tells us we have things that we should be thinking on. Whose nature is that then? If you're thinking on things that are lovely, things that are kind, things that are just, things that are honest, and things that are good report, then whose kingdom is that? Whose kingdom is being made manifested in? But if we're feeling this evil, be it something that we have not even come to the knowledge of the truth of ourselves, because we're too busy insulating and defending our attitude that we have taken personal ownership for, or be it someone attacking us, and we can feel the threat coming from the outside. Either way it goes, we have to become a whole lot more discerning than what we are as a people. Is that making any sense? We, we really truly do. It is a natural law, the order of things, the way that things are working in this cosmos. Now, it's been working like this for a long time. It's just taking us some time to come to the knowledge of the truth of it. Does that make any sense? But again, Yah's laws does not work like the laws of the United States of America. I keep trying to tell you, he don't care nothing about the laws of this land. Now, while we're here in this captivity, we need to obey the laws of the land as long as they do, do not conflict with the law of Yah. Because remember, the same thing that the devil was doing way back then when he had his minions and stuff um, already um, in his military, uh, trying to make sure that the righteous falls, such as Daniel and all them, you know, they, they have to find some type of an occasion in your Yah in order to condemn you. And that's what, it's the same standard operating procedure that these spirits are doing on a daily. So the decree is that all of these pains will be in your life, either by you or someone who wants to cause you evil. This is why you have to pay attention to emotions and feelings. They will tell you everything you need to know. I can't tell you how many people I've seen go away bitter because they refuse to take responsibility for their own actions or inactions. And they put forth the finger to everybody else and they still remain in a worse condition. Or the state that they end up going to is worse than the one that they were in. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I'll get this. Uh, did I read that? All right. So, if you sow your own sin, notice, I'm going to sin. I'm talking about a wicked, right? I'm not talking about evil, I'm talking about sin. You will reap your own because you can't do one without the other. Does that make any sense? When there is sin, unconfessed sins in your life right there, you're going to feel the evil for it. That's part of the law of sowing and reaping. Hmm? Y'all gave the law and it provided penalties for breaking the law. So, we live in a time where we feel all of these things, and yet we are not meeting y'all's conditions for deliverance. Week in, week out, month after month, we still go ahead and experience these same things, same feelings and doing nothing about them. Aren't you tired by now? Sometimes 
you know, the Bible says surely a man, uh, his own spirit can abstain his own infirmity. Oppression will make a man mad. It's just taking you a long time to get there. I mean, because you, you have to understand, you, if you are used to, I mean, for instance, you know, there's never a time I'm not in pain. I could remember a time when I wasn't in pain, but because of choices and decisions, lifestyles, the way I've done in life and stuff, are you following me? Um, that's a sowing and a reaping there. So some of us have grown so used to the negative emotional pain and the bad feelings, they've just become a part of us, kind of like a scar on the body. Hmm? But these can be removed because this is things that affects us spiritually. Are y'all hearing me? These things can be removed. But you can't be in agreement with the old you, the old self, or someone who is in disagreement with the Ruah while using you as a platform or a doormat. Two kingdoms. And only two kingdoms are operating. All right? Galatians 6.6 6 says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. Yah is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you see the apostle Saul, when he was actually writing this letter, to the assembly at Galatians. He wasn't saying anything that wasn't already written in the scriptures. He was speaking to them, and of course we have a translation today in a way that we can comprehend and understand. For he that saw to his flesh, so if you feel bad, disagreeable, hurt, negative feelings, negative emotions, then you have sown to the flesh and shall of that flesh reap corruption. After all, you are the one that's feeling it. I'm not feeling it. No discharge in this war. But he that sowed to the what? Spirit or the Ruach shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Remember, life and death is in the power of the what? The tongue. We all have to be on guard for our tongue. We all do. We all do. On a daily we do. Two kingdoms. Second Corinthians 4, 3 says, But if our gospel, meaning the good news, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom there is a mighty one, there is a God that is of this world. And what this God has done, he has not blinded your natural eyesight, but he has blinded your minds so that you wouldn't be able to see his kingdom operating. I told you, everything in this world has a natural answer to everything, so you'd have to do nothing about the spirit. And, I mean, think about it. They, they, can, they can make a lot of pain, even though it's not going away. They can dull in it, dull through their drugs. People's minds are definitely being blinded where you can get somebody to go out here and take a gun and just go shoot off in a crowd of people. Hmm? Satan is using pharmacia, sorcery, drugs to alter and change the minds of people. It's a war going on in the spirit. Then we go back to John 10, 10 again. The thief come up not but to steal, kill, and to destroy, but he come to give what? Life and that more abundantly. All right? So, in whom the mighty one, Satan, his kingdom, of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of Yahshua, shine unto them. Notice, our minds are blinded when we don't believe. You hear that? Because there is light to the good news of Christ, who is in the image of Yah should shine unto them. You know, it's amazing how many people wrestle over this. You can, you can see this statement all the time, image of, you know, and they still don't know who he is. Remarkable, isn't it? 
This is the key that I always emphasize. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the master, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Evil. Again, it's translated 442 times. And it's never with the ideal that Yah created sin. Y'all hear that? There was a being that was created that was bad, that was disagreeable, that was malignant, that was rebellious. And since that is his kingdom, he promotes his nature of his kingdom throughout the universe. And that took place in the heavenlies before the earth was even created. So this evil comes from the Hasatan or Satan. It is his very nature, it's his character, it's his attitude. It's making any sense? Sin is what you are tempted to do when you feel evil. Evil is the communication to get you to transgress the law. And the law was already on this earth well before Moshe gave us the commandments. It says that Abraham kept his commandments. Mm-hmm. It sure did. 1 Timothy 5.24 says, Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. We receive these kind of messages because of mercy. Extreme mercy in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation because he said he was going to have a remnant. Because he is our salvation. He is our savior. And he's trying to save us from ourselves. Does this make any sense? Because he has to have a people that's going into his kingdom without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. And the only thing that washes us is the word. Y'all getting this? So if we don't confess these sins that are taking place right now, then for sure they will follow us to judgment. If we meet his conditions and we confess these sins before the breath go out of our body, then he is merciful to separate them as far as from the east to the west, to throw them into the depths of the sea and never to be remembered again. Why? Because he is just. That's why it's good to become very sober-minded right now in the time that we're in and not insulate and defend the enemy that has been deceiving us all this time. Does it make any sense? So we want to confess. We want to get all this right while we have a chance to get it right because we don't want anything following after. Satan employs clever lies and principalities with devils to persuade us to participate in his evil kingdom. We participate in the evil kingdom by agreeing um, with evil. You know, anytime we feel bad, anytime we feel disagreeable, anytime we feel malignant, anytime we, y'all begin to get this, right? It's a temptation for us to be able to act out of character. Our character now being that we have the Ruah inside of us now. All right, Father, Mr. Mortify the deeds of the flesh, die to the old man, and bring forth the new man that is created new in Christ. Is that right? And this is that very power transformation of y'all. So listen, we are created with a free will, just like Satan was. And this free will allows us to choose how to live. The problems many of you are having today is that you don't want to choose to live for Yah. If you don't do nothing about the negative feelings, negative emotions, they're just not going to go away. 
You ever heard of diseases going into remission? Well, if it's in remission, it's still there. We're in a, we're in a disease eradication business. We're not trying to help the disease to go dormant for a while so your body can feel better for a little while, only to come back at the most opportune time at your weakest state to you really destroy you like never before because you wouldn't probably in full strength. This making sense? Y'all getting this right? So the problem that many we're having today is that we don't want to choose to live for y'all. We want to live for you, including y'all, when you need him. See, you want to live for you. You want to live for you. And you want the whole universe to change for you, rather than you being conformed to his image. So we're being enticed, we're being tempted on a daily to perform the kingdom of the Hasatan, even though, I say it over and over again, we're the only people on the face of planet Earth that can choose at any given time to walk in either one of these natures because we're born again. And what we want to do is walk so much in the strength of the new man that the old man loses Value loses strength, loses power. Does that make sense? For instance, you cannot make someone love you. It's an act of your will. Love is an action and a choice. Did y'all hear that? Love is not a feeling that comes after you've made the choice and you showed action. It'll be the result of it. You know what I mean? So when, you look, when you're fond of a brother, you're fond of a sister, you hug him, you'll feel a connection spiritually there because, you, I mean, I love them. You, you can shake a heathen's hand out there, you don't feel nothing. It's just like if you was, you, I, you, you know what I mean? It's like if you was trying to touch a dead body, you get nothing out of them because there's no life in them. They don't have a ruah. You go out, you see the saints out there in, in, in town, all of a sudden it's like, wow, something, you come alive. Why? There's a spirit that's agreeing. You see the dead every day, and did not Christ say, let the dead bury the dead? So there are people that are walking dead. We have a zombie attack all around us, everywhere. Them boogers are alive. They're everywhere. <laughs> These zombies are real. Y'all thought we was making them up. <laughs> he tried to tell us. Blessed be his holy name. Magnificent name. Ephesians 3, 9 says, And to make all men see what is the, here it is, fellowship. You hear that? Of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in Yah, who created all things by Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Look at that word fellowship. Partnership. Partnership. A fellowship and to make all men see what is the partnership and what is the joint effort. The participation. Now you see the reason why it says, let us forsake not the assembly of ourselves as the manner of some is. Why? Because we see a day that's approaching, fastly approaching. So you think about this, Israel. Look how strong you would be in the spirit if you'd done something about us. And then guess what? Then and only then we'd be ready for the wilderness experience. Because we can purge ourselves from all these bad, evil, malignant, disagreeable spirits that cause us to have envy and strife. And we would recognize the enemy. Because remember, the word is true. They try to talk to us over and over again. There is nothing from without that can destroy us, only that which is what? Within. So that means something in is going to be coming out to try to work destruction. Y'all hearing this? Y'all getting this? And I submit that's only when we're going to be able to walk in pure love. Because then we'll be willing to lay down our lives for our friends. We won't, we're not willing to lay down our life as long as we're bickering. Oh, 
Evil enters our lives as a result of sin in our lives. So who brings the evil into our lives then? Well, 1 Kings 22, 20 says, and Yahweh said, listen real close. Y'all following? Y'all listening? See, people think that the Messiah, he's the first one to expose evil spirits. But if you just read the scriptures, <laughs> y'all's been telling us about these evil spirits a long time. The Messiah just showed us how to deal with them. He exposed, for this purpose was the Son of Yah manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He said, look, here they are, this is what they do, and this is how you handle them. And Yahweh said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this matter, well, who are these people that are saying on this matter? And another said on that matter. And there came forth a... It didn't say human. It didn't say man. This is a communication just like in the time of Job that is taking place up in the heavenlies. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, a spirit came? Oh, the same type of spirit that when Yah had Satan coming before him, I thought he kicked him out. Well, you go read Job, it does. It says, there was a day that came that the sons of Yah appeared and presented themselves before the Most High. And the Most High started this fight. You know why? Because he has an overcoming opinion of you. But he know you're not going to be any good until you try it. See, we want to inherit the kingdom, but we don't want to be tried. We want to try to bring our residue and our impurities into that holy kingdom. We don't want to be purged. It's amazing. Nobody told us that we were going to get by this war. Y'all said to Job, have you considered, y'all said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know the story. The Baptists just, all the religions tied up. They make y'all the villain. And we be agreeing. No wonder we're still in the same condition. Well, there was a spirit that stood before y'all and said, I will persuade him. You mean a spirit? Yeah, a thought going to come and enter into your mind. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and be a what? You mean to tell me that was a spirit that volunteered for this mission? Yes. Now, if this is a lying spirit, this cannot be Michael, Gabriel, all these holy archangels. There's just no way because the nature is totally different. Now, when you lie, you know what you're influenced by. You've been persuaded by a spirit. Don't tell me. You know? That's what a spirit says. It's going to go and persuade I am in the mouth of the prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him. Y'all gave him the leave to go. But Yah's not the one that's doing this line. Yah's not the one persuading these prophets. Just like Yah wasn't the one that was bringing all that calamity on Job either. And neither is Yah the one bringing all the calamity on you either. So when he says that he chasing those whom he loves, that means he has a kingdom set up to chasten you. It's like a law. You step outside of the order of things, then I've got something set up for you to bring you back. That's what it's designed for. 
But when people are bastards, they despise the chastening, they kick against the pricks, they get the trace, and they say, you know, they'll go out bitter and angry against the Most High. This, this devil is something else, isn't he? Hmm? Form before, huh? So these spirits said, I'm going to go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, Yahweh have put a lying spirit. So here we go. Listen to this. Listen to this translation and what it does to our mind. Even though we are familiar with the way that these kingdoms work. Listen to what it says. Watch the translation. Now, therefore, behold, Yahweh have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. The unregenerated, cardinal, American mind would automatically blame y'all. I mean, after all, it's an act of God. And Yahweh has spoken evil concerning thee. I didn't hear him say one thing evil. But, hey, so do you see how the translation... And the way we perceive today blames Yahweh simply because of the way it is written. But remember, Yah is good. Let's just accept the fact that there are two kingdoms operating. And any time we step outside of our inherited right, as being Israelites, saying to the Most High God, then he has a whole nother kingdom out there waiting. The gods that have been appointed to the nations. Job 2.10, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of Yah? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now we're sticking with this part right here. To this point, Job hadn't done anything with his lips. In other words, he didn't charge Yah with all of the calamity, all of the adversity, all the death, and all the loss. That it, he didn't attribute any of that to Yah. We because the way we've been conditioned would ask, why, y'all? And we're the one that is good, the one that is holy, the one that is just, the one that is pure, the one that is right. We would turn around and make him evil and refuse the chastening because of ignorance. Why are y'all's people destroyed? For a lack of knowledge, because we reject knowledge. Is all this making any sense? Y'all getting anything out of this? Hmm? Anything at all, huh? But who smote Job? Job 2 6. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. Notice, he gave him a leave, he gave him right, he gave him authority. But Yah is not the one that is personally extending his hand to do the affliction. The evil one. Who by his very nature. You know a snake. Will bite without any enchantment. Because it's his nature. So see Satan can't help but to go. To him, it's an opportunity. He's doing according to his nature. How did all this take place? How did all this take place? Because he looked and he, because he was created with any free will and he envied. And because he saw his beauty, his magnificence, he saw how wonderfully made that he was, he says, you know what? I can be just like Ain't going to be no two on the throne. There's only one. And so he went around and spit in other angels' ears that would hear him. And they received the very 
cancerous nature that he spewed and it became their nature. Y'all hearing this? And Yahweh said unto Satan, the Hasatan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Wait a minute. So we cannot no longer be charging Yah as the thief that cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy. So went Satan forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore balls from the sole of his foot unto the crown of his head. So did Yahweh smite him or did Satan? So went Satan forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote who? So these lying Baptists and all your other lying religions out there that's got you building up a negative attitude towards Yah. That's the reason why you have the wrong fear of him. Your fear doesn't teach you to reverence him to the point that you want to obey him. As a good, obedient son and daughter, your fear teaches you to be terrified of him, to keep running from him because you know he's going to get you. The truth is we are suffering the consequences for our own sins. Or well, either someone is being used of the Hasatan to afflict us, I can only hope you can tell the difference. Because unless you are able to tell the difference, you're not going to be able to overcome nor help those who are subject to him at his will at that particular time to be pulled from his clutches. So the truth is, Yah turns us over to our own devices. Hmm? Are y'all hearing this? Brother Saint, can you get Proverbs chapter 1 starting in verse 24? I hope that some way, somehow, that the word is washing your mind, is penetrating, it's uh, giving you marching orders for you to be able to go out and wage war. Especially those spirits that war against your mind. Go ahead, brother Shane, read. Because I have called and ye refused. Mm. Y'all hear this? Y'all's calling, you refuse. In other words, do not let these messages that are going on <laughs> in the hour that we're receiving, <laughs> don't think for one minute that they don't come from the Father, but they do. That's why he said, if you want to increase in faith, you're going to have to hear a preacher. You're not going to increase in faith by reading. Now, that doesn't mean that you become sacrilegious and don't read either. Does that make any sense? Because you know how spiritual some of y'all will get with all this intelligence that we have today. Read on. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Hmm. But ye have said it not all my counsel. Y'all hear that? In other words, we pushed aside everything he had to offer to us as far as wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Giving us everything we need to go forward in this life. Don't think for one minute that y'all is trying to give you a mansion on top of a hill. Hmm? He's trying to give you a place in his mansion. If he gives you a mansion on top of a hill, make sure you honor him. Read. And would none of my reproof. So we wouldn't, any of his counsels, we would not even take note of any of his reproofs. I also will laugh at your calamity. So when distress, when adversity, when calamity, when desolation, when trouble, when, when all this comes up on you, since you wouldn't pay attention to him, you know what you're going to do when all that takes place, right? You're going to want to call out to him 
And he says, you know what? I'm not going to hear you. Read on. I will mock when your fear cometh. He's going to actually laugh at you. Come on. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Sounds like the enemy coming in like a flood, don't it? Come on. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Now, they, wait a minute. See, this is the way our mind's wired. I didn't take any notice of your corrections. I didn't want to hear any of your reproofs. No, nah, I didn't even want to take to any of your counsels. I was doing my own thing. All of a sudden, the bottom starts falling out, and then the enemy coming in like a whirlwind. Now I want to talk to you, Father. Hadn't been talking to you all this time, but now I want to talk to you. Hadn't built a relationship with you all this time, but now I want to build a relationship with you. I've ignored you all this time. I had an opportunity because now I have calamity. I have adversity. I have fear. I have dread. I have terror. I have the enemy really coming in and oppressing me. So now I'm going to cry out to you. I'm going to call out to you. Y'all says, yeah, I understand. And I'm going to laugh at you that day. Watch this. What do you think that's going to do to your heart since you have not conditioned it to obey him in the first place? Now you see the reason why it's been better for a lot of people that have never even been born? Because they end up charging him foolishly because they don't know the condition of their hearts. Read on. They shall seek me early. We're going to do all the early morning prayer meetings. We're going to really get religious. We're going to we're going to remember everything we should have done when, when, when we was in the green. Now the dry is on us. Come on. But they shall not find me. Hmm. I thought he said if we call upon him, he's near. I thought he said he's nigh to us. But you forgot about your part in this. See how we do? We, we try to use the creator of the universe for our own benefit. I mean, the apostles already told us that they try to bring this holy, the Holy One of Israel, the creator universe, down to the image like that of corruptible man. And he ain't coming down like that. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, Isaiah said, I saw the most high. And he's high and he's lifted up. The one who's going to be coming down is us. Read on. For that they hated knowledge. They did what? They hated knowledge. Now, see, we hate in many different ways. It's called refuse, ignore, act stupid, dumb on purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's hating knowledge. I told you, you got time for Facebooking, but you ain't got a face, you ain't got time for your face in the book. Read on. And did not choose the fear of Yahweh. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore. Now, shall how do you think a lot of times Yah is going to reprove you? Well, let's go back to the book. Did he not raise up a prophet to rebuke? Israel in the renewed covenant he says I give you apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers the instruction of Timothy was preach the word reprove <laughs> rebuke I th I'm waiting on y'all preach the word reprove rebuke you ain't God. Preach the word. Reprove and rebuke. I ain't got to listen to you. Preach the word. Reprove and rebuke. And do it with all long suffering too. <laughs> so who's suffering? The preacher is. 
And you don't want to become evil with your bad, malignant, disagreeable attitudes and spirits. See how this wiring is done. I'm telling you, this world has messed us up on a royal way. Mm-hmm. So when he says, you were none of my counsel, you were none of my reproofs, well, where did it come from? <clears throat> Moses. We don't want to hear from the Most High no more. You talk to us. I wasn't there. But you're the children of the fathers that was there. So don't try to wiggle out of this now. <laughs> there ain't no running and hiding, Israel. So, yeah, we got the rule. I got the Holy Spirit, but he's given us preachers. <laughs> yes, he has, too. He given us prophets. Yes, he has, too. He's given us all type of voices and mouthpieces for us. And mind you, if you ever think yourself to be a voice or a mouthpiece, we are the ones that's going to test and prove your vision, your revelation, your dream. I, I you know, you know, in this generation, while well, y'all called me, well, I'm going to be the one to determine that. Because out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, every word is going to be established. If the prophets speak, let it be by two or by course three and let the other judge. I don't care what it is, tongues, interpretation, tongues, vision, dream and stuff. We're going to prove it because ain't nobody in Ireland to themselves. There's only one that is answerable to no man. All the rest of us, we're accountable to each other. See, this is how you get rid of all these anarchists. <laughs> I tell you, anyway. Come on, bro, saying. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. Because you wouldn't listen, you wouldn't hearken and stuff. So guess what? When you start eating the fruit of your own way, don't start hollering, why? Come on. And be filled with their own devices. And they're going to be filled with their own devices. Now, what does that mean? You remember the Apostle Saul told us over in the book of Romans about a reprobate mind being turned over, be able to do those things which are unseemly? Read on. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Now, that's amazing, too. That's pretty bad when you affect even the simple people. And, 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 and mind you, Paul tried to tell us you be careful lest there be found in any of you a root of bitterness. It's going to spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See what he got it from? Proverbs. The turning away of the simple. Line upon line, precept on precept. Here a little, there a little. Come on, brother, saying. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Y'all hear that? All these things that you count as victory, count as that's the very thing is going to destroy you. Is that it? Come on, read on. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, if you want to be wise and you hearken to him, shall dwell safely. Shall dwell what? Safely. Biting your fingernails to the quick. Safely. Worry. Safely. Sweat falling off your brow for doing nothing. Safely. Having anxiety attacks. Safely. Having schizophrenia panic attacks. Safely. If there's a such thing. Probably is. It's probably a new disease nowadays. I mean, these, these things are doubling up on us now. <laughs> Safely. Are y'all getting this? Come on, brother. Eh? And shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now, I like the last part. And be quiet of fear of evil. Romans 7, verses 18 through 25. Man, I'm just, oh man, I, I try my best to fit it in there, Israel. I did. And that devil was like, no, he didn't. That's because he getting his ass whooped. <laughs> Oh, 
Read on. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Now, that's Pastor Dow's flesh. That's nobody else's flesh, but that's Pastor Dow's flesh. I mean, after all, I am the most wicked man that's ever walked the face of planet Earth. You, you get a pass. You are divine. I joined the club with Paul. I know that is in me, in my flesh. Joel, of what, brother, saying? No good thing. Ain't nothing good in his flesh. Hmm? But yours, perfumed, smell good, insulated by a fake smile, a bad attitude. See the reason why the father won't preach it? See, we can hear the word, but that preaching, boy, it's kind of like, you ever seen everybody, somebody who smoked, they take a cigarette and put it down, they take their foot and then they mash it in the ground to make sure it's out. That's what that preaching does. It, <clears throat> it, it grinds it to ashes. <laughs> Read on. For to will is present with me. There is a will in all of us that is present, but. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Because we're ignorant in many, many things. But, come on. For the good that I would, I do not. Every time you make up your mind, okay, I'm going to do good now. I got it. I'm, I get it. I, I, I'm on this, right? Next thing you know, here come evil again. Just when you thought you had the victory. Then here come the devil again. Just when you thought you made up your mind because you said it. You made up your mind, but you didn't make up your heart. Meaning you gave mental assent, but you did nothing about this. Come on. But the evil which I would not that I do. Man, Paul's in trouble. We'd hang him up by the toes today. Paul's just exposing himself. You an evil man. You say you want to do good, but you can't. How can you be an apostle? Sound like America today, don't it? Don't it sound like America today? Sound like you self-righteous Israelites, don't it? Paul just telling it like it is. Read on. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I than you. No, no, no. It is you. It is you. You, try, you ain't wiggling out of this, Paul. I seen you. Ain't that how we would respond? Paul was like, come on, man. Don't blame me for this evil. Can't you see I disagree with it? Nope. I see you. Feet that's running the mischief. See, you get, when you know these scriptures, man, you, you ain't nobody getting out of nowhere, man. We would, brought, we would kill them. We the, the, come on, the letter killer. <laughs> no, man. <get> <laughs> uh, Long Saints Tribunal. We finished. We use this word the wrong way. <laughs> I got the sword of the spirit. Yeah, you got a sword of a spirit, all right. <laughs> Murderer. <laughs> hey, read that part again. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. How many times you made up your mind and said, I'm not going to do that no more. Only come to a little later on find out that you thought you... And then next thing you know, you fell into it again. Paul knew how to separate the sin from the real renewed man that's in him. Today, boy, 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 these self-righteous religious people, they, they better not find out anything about you. It's over. When he looks into your eyes, it comes to you as no surprise. All is the same. Every time he's out with you, he tries to tell you what to do. You don't need it that way. 
but deep, deep down inside. Everybody know what I'm singing? I'm singing Ariel Speedwagon. It's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Come on, bro, sing before we lose spirit in here. <laughs> I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with See, me. Anytime you make up your mind, heart, you're going to do good, the devil's going to be there to fight you every step of the way. That's why you might as well prepare yourself for a battle. Stop looking for easy streets. Stop saying, okay, I'm going to say this prayer right here, and the devil going to leave me alone. I ain't never read that in the book. <laughs> read on. For I delight in the law of Yah after the inward man. See that? That's why we need to go back to the law of Yah after the inward man. The inward man love that law. Hmm? But I see another law in another my Another law is working. And this is the law we kept, keep, keep trying to tell you over and over again for all you untransformed Christians out there. You want to keep hearing the law it down our way with it. You don't even know what, what, what law it was. Read on. Another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Trying to do what? And bringing me into captivity. Y'all hear that that law is trying to do? Bring you into what? Captivity. It don't want you to change from your old evil Adamic nature. Every single time you're trying to set out and transform yourself from unrighteous to righteous, this devil's going to do everything he can to solidify his position. It's a war. To the law of sin which is in my members. See, the law of sin is where? In my in members. Members, we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Just because you say, I confess my sins before you, Father, now come into my heart. You still have a nature that you're going to deal with. And if you don't deal with it, don't worry about it. No discharge in this war. It's already dealing with you regardless if you fight or not. We, we, we are dealing with the type of... This is the type of enemy we're dealing with. If you are just within a few beats of breath, still a life in your body, he is still beating you with everything he can. So it's time to rise up. Read on. Oh, wretched man that I am. Uh, you better believe it. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank my Yah through Jesus Christ, our Master. Mm -hmm. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yah. See that? With the mind, we serve the law of who? Law of Yah. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. With the mind, we will serve the law of what? Yah. Now, why do you think that Satan raised up a religion like Christianity and tell you you don't need the law now? Because he don't want your mind serving the law of Yah. But... With your flesh. Read. The law of sin. Look at the devil. And the devil is a liar. Is that it? Romans 7, 17. Now then there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth. Where is it at? Well, I keep telling you, you know, as a pastor, I hear a lot of things. Don't nothing surprise me. I'm looking for that spirit, that ruach. They want to make an end to that. Are y'all following me? I hope y'all let these sayings sink deep down in your heart. Don't let them slip. I hope they bring some type of encouragement. And if more than anything, um, they're giving you a whole lot more information against the enemy of your soul. So you can battle with him. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Pastor Cora is going to be doing a mass deliverance, I think, on the 14th of November. 
Uh, we're going to start putting out more information about this. So all you within a few hundred miles of that area, y'all may want to try to do whatever you think you can to try to be there, okay? We'll put the information out on YouTube. Y'all have a wonderful night. Father, we thank you for all things. We pray these things sing deep down in our hearts in the magnificent name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen. King coming. Shalom.